He's the former two-term Republican governor of New Mexico, and you've seen him at a Republican debate last fall where he had perhaps one of the more memorable lines, not just of that night, but of the debate season. My uh, next-door neighbor's two dogs have created more shovel-ready jobs than this current administration. <laughs> But just last month, he accepted the Libertarian Party's nomination for president. And according to his campaign, he'll be on the ballot in November in at least 47 states. Joining me now, the Libertarian presidential nominee, Gary Johnson. Governor Johnson, good morning. Chuck, great to be with you. There, Our, there is a third choice. There is a third choice, so I hear. Okay, so 47 states. That means you got... What are you missing? Well, uh, actually, and, and, actually we're thinking we're thinking it. Uh, you know, it could well be fifty. So, but I, I'm I'm going to sit what, here today and tell you there are going to be three candidates on the ballot in all fifty states. The states you're missing here: Michigan, Oklahoma, and what else? Uh, or where yeah. are you guys concerned? Well, there's a question, I guess, with Mississippi right now. But but if you take Michigan, for example, uh, we do have a Gary E. Johnson from Austin, Texas, who's a libertarian who. Uh, may run uh, as the libertarian uh, So your name candidate. will be on the ballot, is what you're saying, but it may not <laughs> none be of, you. None of, the, none of the bumper stickers will have <laughs> None to of the bumper stickers change, fair enough. All right, you were running as a Republican, and I know you were very frustrated. You did get into one of the debates, um, but you so, were frustrated by it. Now, you moved to this third way. Are you at all concerned? You're, you're, you've been a, a small government conservative for quite some time when you governed New Mexico. You're at all concerned that you're going, that you could just a few thousand votes could tip the election to the president. Well, I'm thinking it might be the other way around. Do you think you could take at, more votes away from President well, Obama? I'm coming at uh, Obama from the standpoint of, really, let's get out of the wars that we're currently involved in. Uh, let's end the drug wars. Uh, let's repeal the Patriot Act. Let's really bring about marriage equality, believing that it is a constitutionally guaranteed right. And then I come at Obama, or excuse me, Romney, from the right. Uh, let's, let's balance the federal budget now. Uh, and that means taking on the entitlements, and that means taking on a lot of really difficult decisions that uh, neither of them seem to want to address. The, the biggest hurdle you're going to have is probably going to be financial, because it takes money to sometimes get the attention you need to get to get the poll ratings than to get into the debates. Oh, so, yeah. so help, help me go from one, two, three here. Money. Well, uh, the pie in the sky, I wouldn't be doing this if there wasn't a pie in the sky scenario here of winning. And to win, I need to poll at 15% against Obama and Romney. And when my name is included, when my name is in the polls right now, I'm anywhere between 7 and 9 against the two of them. So that is a possibility. And uh, there's also um, the impetus that I think comes with Ron Paul's candidacy coming to an end. Now, he has said that, it's, that he's not going to win the nomination, but... Uh, uh, I think there still are holdouts, and I think that that will be something that uh, will also come to play in all of this. Well, it, you bring up Ron Paul. I mean, isn't that an acknowledgment that more you're going to take, that your candidacy is likely to take any votes you take away from uh, the two major candidates? You're more likely taking more votes from the Republican side, considering that Ron Paul really organized the libertarian movement within the Republican Party. Well, and so where they have polled, Chuck... Uh, in the states that they have polled, mm -hmm. it's been an absolute mixed bag. Uh, in New Mexico, I take more votes from Obama than I do Romney. Well, that, does that have, some of that have to do with name recognition, you think? Some of that have to do with the fact that, that you know... Well, but, but more votes from mm -hmm. Obama. So in several states, they've done this analysis, and it's absolutely a toss-up. Some states, I take a few uh, percentage points from Romney. In some states, I take a few percentage points from uh, Obama. But most importantly, uh, I think the majority of Americans fall in the category of being fiscally responsible uh, and socially tolerant. I'm in that category. Uh, I think historically, Democrats have done really well, or that people are drawn to the Democratic Party from the standpoint of civil liberties. Um, I think I do better than Obama when it comes to civil liberties. I think historically people are drawn to the Republican Party because of dollars and cents. I think I do better than Romney when it comes to dollars and cents. And I do base that on the fact that I was a two-term governor of New Mexico, and I think I was very successful at well, that. What, uh, what are you looking at for running mate? Uh, Jim Gray. Uh, Jim, Jim Gray, Gray former, well, uh, uh, a uh, Superior Court judge retired in California, uh, also a former federal prosecutor. Really? Who solid. appointed him to the bench? Uh, 
I believe I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But um, very outspoken when it uh, has come to the war on drugs and uh, just a really solid guy. The notion that uh, uh, if I'm elected president, that uh, vice president would be one heartbeat away, that notion, and that this is really a solid guy who has also run for the U.S. Senate in California as a libertarian. Former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, the now the libertarian nominee. Thanks for coming in this morning. Chuck, thank you very much for having me on. We'll talk with you again down the road.